Yo, what's up? Today we're going to cover one of my favorite mixing topics, parallel processing. But before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, my name is Michael Weston. It would mean so much to me if you liked the video and subscribed. I have a lot of content in store that I'm excited to share with you. In my personal opinion, parallel processing is one of the most creative techniques in mixing. And when you can settle down and really get this technique into your tool belt, it can come in handy in more ways than just one. Parallel processing is the act of taking a singular sound source, a singular signal, if you will, and splitting it into two or more different ways. So imagine having one sound, like your piano, and dividing it into three different parts. In doing so, you're allowing yourself the ability to process a single sound three different ways. In Ableton right here, we have this beat that I literally started last night. It's kind of a Sanfa vibe. And by that, it is a left field R&B idea that I began. So I want to apply some parallel processing to a few of my sounds in this beat. The first sound for sure is the piano. Let's go ahead and solo the piano real quick. Let's hear where we're at with it. For me, I want as much control as possible and still be creative in the midst of the processing. So let's go ahead and split up this sound source. So there's multiple ways that you can do that. To get started, let's go ahead and grab our audio effect rack and let's drag it into our chain. I want what I do with parallel processing for this sound to take place earlier in the chain of this piano. So that's why I'm not putting it at the end. In our audio effect rack, what we need to do is click these three bars right here. This is the show hide chain list button. And now we have this view. This is us literally splitting this sound source into multiple different chains. Okay, so we have two right now. Let's go ahead and play this piano solo. The piano was obviously louder when both of these chains were playing at the same time. In our audio effect rack, we can add different effects to these two different chains. I mentioned before how I want to possibly affect the high end of this piano differently, but how can I do that? How would I go about doing that? I would need to first split the frequency of this chain. I'm gonna grab an EQ right now. I'm gonna drag it upon my chain here and let me go ahead and rename this chain i'm going to re rename it high and what i'm going to do now is create a high pass and i'm going to drag this high pass cutting off all of those lows all of those mids i just want this high end frequency information to be targeted let's hear what's going on now That was very quiet, but when I soloed this high chain, we can hear that only the highs of the piano is playing on that chain. The benefit of what I'm doing is being able to edit this piano sound without affecting the dry signal. So let me rename this chain right here dry. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really do too much to the dry chain. I'm gonna keep this as normal as possible, 
but for the heck of it and just you know me thinking creatively i'm gonna grab this oxford inflator i'm gonna just put that in, in uh the dry dry plus oxford just to stay like organized or whatever so i want to add some more bite to the highs of this piano and i want it to cut through so in order to do that there's so many different ways to do that your creativity really has to lead you but knowing my tools and keeping things simple let me just add a bit of saturation to the highs and let me play that solo Yeah, there's something really clean about having the ability to split the frequencies of a sound and to process it differently while still keeping the independence of a dry signal. But I'm not done, man. I want to add some more body to this piano. So if the highs is giving me some more bite and some more like pleasant harshness, then I would imagine that the lower end of this piano can give me some more body. So let's make another chain. I'm gonna rename this Lowe's. Let me grab another EQ because I know that how I want to edit this sound is by targeting the lows of this piano. So I'm going to low pass. So what can I do to maybe add a bit more weight to the low end? The answer to that is anything. Any plugin that you feel can get the job done, you can use. For the sake of saving CPU and keeping things simple for those who are watching that may not have access to a lot of different plugins, I'm gonna just add another saturator to it and maybe change the, the curve here on that. Pull back maybe a little bit there. still have some more options really limitless options of course you can add as many effects as you want to your chains but you can also from here blend in the signals turn things down turn things up blend in the signal exactly how you want it to maybe you want to pan things different directions it's entirely up to you it's a really truly creative process so in this beat i have some other examples of parallel processing but let me show you guys the most simplest way to use parallel processing and that's with the sends and returns in ableton live so in ableton here are your sends and here are your return tracks with these two things you can send portions of your signal or all of your signal however much you want to these return tracks that have effects on them. And these effects can be whatever you want them to be. But the principle stays the same. In doing so, you are receiving the benefit of still having your full dry signal and another signal of that sound that is processed completely differently. So here is my shaker and my drums. And it's cool like how it is, but hey, maybe I want to add some reverb. Instead of throwing reverb on the track, because in doing so, it may wash out my shaker more than I would like it to. And honestly, even when I pull back the wet dry knob, I know personally for how I want to process this by having the reverb directly on the track, I'm not getting the full benefit of those transients in a separate wet signal in the blend that parallel processing affords you. 
So let me go ahead and use my sins and returns. I'm going to blend in my return that has reverb on it. I'm going to blend that in with my shake. possibilities are truly endless with parallel processing there's so much that you can do with it to let your creativity run free for real start to think about ways that maybe you can even automate with the sins and return tracks and maybe some of these effect racks you can just save as templates for another day another beat with that being said if you made it this far through the video thank you so much don't forget to like the video and subscribe my name is Michael Westing. You guys stay safe out there, man.